Hi there. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about some of the really tough stuff that I've been through. And I think it's really important to identify um, that life is hard. Being human is hard. And we all grow up in families that may identify with us or may not. You know, just because you have the genetics of your parents doesn't mean that they're going to treat you really well. It doesn't mean that they know how to deal with you. It doesn't mean that they know how to talk to you. And then you can even take it to another step further, which is about generational difference. So, you know, our parents' generation often didn't communicate. They weren't taught to communicate. Um, their parents spanked them. They were hit in school. Um, it was such a different space. And then they did try and change with our generation. And then now uh, the younger generation, my brother's generation, so he's about seven years younger than me, is being classified as soft and you know they're just a much more feminine um generation and you know what he has a huge beautiful heart and I see so much of um that not being um taken as an importance and you know that older generation is saying oh well you know the millennials are entitled or something they have no idea what we're going through when it comes to economy and displacement of jobs and things like that. When they had jobs given to them from school and in Australia, they had um, free university. And I mean, I've been in university for five years and how am I going to pay back my, um, you know, fees that I've uh, accumulated because... I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't own a house because it's too expensive. Um, I don't own a car because it's too expensive. And yet I'm still struggling. And, um, you know, for 10, nearly 15 years, 12 to 15 years, I had serious mental health issues. And, you know, that came from... For me, it came from my grandpa dying at 15 and a friend dying at 15 and I couldn't handle what death was. And, you know, my parents were Christian at the time. So um, my family, both my families were Salvation Army. And I knew that, like, my mum especially didn't really fit into this and she did eventually move away to just a more, like, personal spiritual space, which we are in now, um, and a more of a Buddhist um space in her spirituality but it really affected me because I was kind of like okay so where do we go what happens when we die and, and I guess I never really spoke about it I didn't really know what was going on with me and I was fiercely depressed fiercely anxious and I was getting bullied in school and you know I didn't want to go to school and I, I think a part of me just never understood school I was kind of like why am I here and when you're in a depressed space, you can't do well at school. I mean, even now, if I'm not in a good space focus-wise, I can't do well at my uni work. And I have to just let it pass until the next day when I might have a better clarity. Um, you know, I studied after school and, well, actually, I didn't study for 90 and 90, nearly four years because I couldn't get government benefits to help me to study because um, in Australia, if you're under 21, you're still classified as a dependent of your parents. Now, I'd lived in the state for two years and I'd been out of home since I was 18. So I was working to pay my rent and bills and anything else. And that's all the money I had. I couldn't afford to study um, as well. So I didn't get to study till later. And then I was a heavy abuser of alcohol, heavy abuser of anything I could find, really. I was never heavy into drugs for quite a while when I was younger, but I did eventually, um, you know, start getting into things every now and then. I was never a heavy user, um, but definitely a really heavy user of alcohol. And I've literally only just been able to uh, get myself off that this year. And I'm now 31. So it's taken a long, long time. And, you know, it took uh, nearly 15 years for me to be able to battle my depression, anxiety, and I even was at the point where I couldn't leave my house for quite a while. And 
I somehow found this amazing psychologist who talked to me about anxiety and told me about the fight or flight syndrome and, you know, how reaction and how we are still human. We are still have Neanderthal in our brain. And, you know, the reason that we experience this anxiety is because we're fight or flight. We're going, crap, I can't deal with this. What do I do? And so you run away. Um, and I know that everyone's heard it, but, you know, the biggest thing that she told me to do was to breathe. So I was actually having quite severe panic attacks in my sleep up until a year ago. So even though I'd dibbled, dabbled with alcohol and like I've come off it very slowly, so I would like um, relapse quite a lot. I'd, you know, um, come off it and then relapse really heavily. The only time I was really off everything was when I got pregnant, which was my saviour. And I wouldn't tell anyone to get pregnant unless they were in a really happy relationship, which luckily I was. And it was our choice to do that. But that's what saved me because as soon as I got pregnant, I stopped drinking and stopped smoking. And and I stopped partying and, you know, it just it just made me go, okay, that's it. I have to get off this now. Um, and then, you know, once I finished breastfeeding, I was like back to drinking and not going out and drinking, but just drinking at home, which is probably worse. Um, and any excuse to have a bottle of wine or, you know, something like that. And what, you know, was really important for me at the time when I got to my absolute worst was to go to the doctor and get help. And I spoke to a friend who I know had only just gone on to antidepressants and I spoke to him about, okay, what do I do? I'm like this, I can't handle it. Now, for so long, I hadn't reached out and I was basically the point where I was about to commit suicide and I did actually attempt it and luckily I was drunk and I slipped and I didn't you know hurt myself um severely and by at that point I'd never really known anyone who had committed suicide um after that I've had two three four uh five even you know a few people in family and friends who have killed themselves and it is devastating um and even that caused so much depression and anxiety for me and my husband trying to get past that because having someone go like that you have so many questions and you get so angry about you know why they couldn't just stick it out but then when you've been in that place you know that there's nothing else in your head that can keep you here so I guess like what's really important to realize now is you can get through this it is often a temporary thing it, you need to find someone who can listen. You need to find someone who, who is listening because often we're hearing and we're not listening. You need to find someone who understands what you've been through. Um, you know, some of the best people that I've had in my life have been people who I can just talk to about what's going on and, you know, you can just have that understanding of, yeah, I totally get what that's like. And, you know, if you grow up in a family like um, my husband's where, you know, um, he was labelled as schizophrenic, which is just so not him, but he was, you know, really not coping and he was hearing voices and he was um, experiencing these things. But do you know what? He was worse when he was on the antipsychotics they gave him and nobody was understanding what was actually happening. Now, if you talk to him now, it, w it was all very spiritual. It was all very... Like, there's no doubt someone was contacting him, someone was trying to talk to him, someone was um, connecting with him. And it was just at a really hard time. And, you know, with parents who were not at all understanding of what was going on, you know, they just freaked out, sent him to a doctor and then just tried to, you know, get a diagnosis. Um, that was really unhelpful, to be honest, because I think sometimes these labels can be really unhelpful you know telling him he's got schizophrenia when you know a few years later he doesn't have that and being off the antidepressants has been the best thing for him and just being loved and listened to um is what he needed so I guess it's really important to identify where can you find that and it may not be in family and it may not even be in friends but you need to find that space, you know, whether you do a bit of a search for counsellors. And I know it's really hard when you've got anxiety. It is. I had to be so pushed because I wasn't even leaving my home when I went, when I found a psychologist. But I guess I did get at the point where I was like, I don't want to die. I actually want to see this through. Because I think I knew I was always here for a reason, but I never really understood why. Um, 
And I do think the spiritual shifts in the moment really are throwing us off. I Last week I really, really struggled and I was like exhausted. I was just sleeping all the time. I just wasn't myself. And, you know, it can be really hard. And I guess if my husband wasn't around, maybe I would have really struggled with it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's please, please look after yourself at this time and find someone to talk to, even if it's someone on the internet. Um, when I was younger, most of the people that I talked to, I'd never met and I still have never met. They lived, you know, overseas, they lived in different states and I'd jump on what was MIRC then and we'd just chat. And sometimes I'd like divulge a lot of personal stuff, but you know what? A lot of people are going through the same thing and sometimes it's just nice to hear that you're not the only one because when you're not talking to anyone about it, you feel like you are the only one. And trust me, you are not the only one going through this. You are not the only one who's, um, you know, been affected by so many different things. And, you know, when I look back at my biggest issue, it's it's not in, even as big as other people's, you know. Um, I sent myself through some pretty bad stuff in my 20s where, like, I just sit here and think, thank goodness I survived because, you know, even moving around the country and some of the people that I was around at the time, I could have ended up in some pretty bad spaces and, you know, I was always looked after, which was really good. And I guess I always did use my intuition in some way um, of where I was and what was happening. But, um, yeah, it is really important to be aware of what you're doing and where you are and what's happening and, you know, just find somebody who listens, who understands, who can talk about the spiritual stuff, who can talk about what's going on with the planet, who can talk about, you know, what you may need. And, you know, if there's anything that's helped me, it's tones. Um, YouTube tones, meditation, um, you know, med uh, Buddhist monks chanting, um, crystals, you know, big crystals to just really ground yourself with, um, singing bowls, um, Himalayan salt lamps, um, anything that's going to help just cleanse the space, um, sage, if I'm feeling at all a bit like, Ugh, I just put some essential oil on or sage and it just really cleanses the place. Um, and your body does it like it, it gets stuck in this low vibration and that's where you are. So I guess, you know, maybe you can think of it as I'm not actually depressed or anxious because in the end, if you can separate the emotion with the mind and the behavior, you're at, that's actually just a, um, reaction to your low vibration. So, um, when you're in a space of depression, anxiety, um, what else, like schizophrenia where you're hearing voices or anything like that um, and you're just feeling really low, uh, bipolar, like any of these depressive disorders, I can tell you now that it is to do with your tone of where your body is at, your aura. And sometimes it is going to take work. It is about patience and it is about working on yourself. But it is also about understanding that you can raise that vibration and you have to do it yourself. Um, yes, someone can help you with that, you know, give you a, a bath, tone bath or something like that. But it is about you recognizing that it is the low vibration. And I notice that when I'm at a low vibration, I look different. And when I look in the mirror, I don't recognize myself and I don't recognize like I, I look so dark and, you know, almost reptilian. Um, the other day I was like, I felt so horrible and I just, I looked really dark and I was like, whoa. And then now, like today, I'm in such a better space. I'm able to look at myself and be like, yeah, okay, I can, you know, see the difference in the vibes. So I think it is really important to go, okay, I'm feeling this low vibration. What I've been through is legitimate, but it doesn't have to rule your life. Um, hopefully some of that has helped. If you want any more information, please contact me. Bye.